Um, the first item on the agenda is the roll call by our clerk. Chairman Lynch. Present. Councilor Backer. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor McGinty. Here. Councilor Mould. Here. Councilor Roberts. Present. Councilor Swift-Kayada. Here. Manager McGovern. Here. The next item is the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we go to uh, reports and correspondence, and I just wanted to take a minute to um, congratulate and thank everyone who's been involved in the Beach to Beacon event. It was yet again another spe spectacular event for our town. And I think we especially want to um, thank the residents of Cape Elizabeth who have been generous in their support of this race from everything from putting up uh, runners to uh, just working around the street closings um, and being volunteers in so many, many different ways. And I think I heard that there were about 500 Cape Elizabeth residents who also ran in the race. And for those of us who don't run, it's always a pleasure to see our neighbors out there um, uh, doing a great job. So um, we just want to thank everyone who's involved in that. It's just a wonderful event for our town. And if anyone else has any other reports or comments, Can I comment on Beach the Beacon? Yeah, yes. of course. I, I won't say I run it. I'll say I participate in it every year. <laughs> And Mary Ann's always out there cheering us on. Um, I'm obviously not an elite runner, so I'm not up front with the, with the real cheers going on. I'm always at the back of the pack, way at the back of the pack. But the people are still out there cheering. It's amazing. I mean, they've probably been cheering for 45 minutes by the time I get there, and they're still out there. They're really enthusiastic. Um, and it is a great thrill, and it's really appreciated by the runners, particularly us also rams, as it were. Um, but it's, it's still a, it's very exciting to be out there and be a participant in it. Jack, Councillor I, I would like to uh, echo the prior comments and also mention that the elite runners come from so many different countries and they're hosted by Cape Elizabeth families and they really do seem to appreciate the hospitality that is extended to them. Uh, again, it's a town-wide effort. I had a couple of other issues that I wanted to bring up too. I wanted to give my kudos to the town manager for an excellent uh, editorial that was in the uh, Press Herald uh, about a week ago, um, it, I'd, in fact, I'd, I'd love to see that on the website so that citizens that may have missed it in the paper could read it as well. It was, it was well thought out and well done. I would like to also ask, admit, perhaps the council at some point, take a look at our road uh, ordinances as far as uh, services being put into, new, into newly paved roads. Uh, I want to see something on the books that we notify uh, people who own lots that could potentially be developed and require that they either put in a stub prior to that road being uh, resurfaced and, or th that they would need to wait. I know that we had just done a ton of work on Fowler Road. A new house has gone in and we've already got a trench across it and that road will be, we'll have a trench forever even though it was repaired fairly well. Uh, and that, that applies to the town as well. If we have property that we own and could potentially be developed, we should be held to that same requirement. Uh, so that was, that's, I guess, where I'm at. I think a lot of things, but I'm going to let it pass. It's hot. Councilor swift Kayata. Um, I would just like to extend my congratulations to Cape Elizabeth High School, the students who are in the drama program there, as well as Dick Mullen, who is their teacher and the drama department chair and their director. I just returned today from um, a trip to the United Kingdom and while I was there I had the opportunity to see these young thespians put on their play in Edinburgh at the Fringe Festival which is an international fringe festival, uh, international drama festival um, and it was quite an achievement for these kids in this program um, to be chosen. They were one of only 25 schools in the, in the nation who were chosen to go to the Fringe Festival to represent the United States. Um, they did a really good job and I want to thank Dick Mullen for his efforts and all the parents involved as well as the teacher chaperones who went who were 
we're working hard, but I heard very good reports from a number of the teacher chaperones about how well behaved and mature our students were. And I just want to extend my congratulations because they, they did a good job. So thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is this town manager's report. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I just wanted to briefly uh, acknowledge the good work that our park crew has been doing over the summer. Uh, I think if for, we, we talked about the Beach to Beacon, uh, it would be an important effort by a lot of folks, but I think so, oftentimes the, the uh, gent there and the, this year gentlemen uh, who, who do our park work really do extraordinary work and uh, they've been out doing a lot of trimming, a lot of cutting of grass, and as we all know it, it hasn't been the, the most pleasant season to do that and keep up with it, but uh, I don't think our grounds, I know our grounds have never looked better uh, at this time of year and uh, the school grounds will be all ready uh, for the, uh, the upcoming uh, school sessions and uh, all of our parks look terrific and I just wanted to thank them. Good. Thank you. Uh, Councilor McGinty. I'm sorry, I missed something. Um, on July 24th, um, the Cumberland County District 2 um, District had their Budget Advisory Committee caucus in South Portland. Um, and it was interesting, three years ago when I went to my first caucus, I was the only person there. I nominated, elected, and selected myself for the position. This year, there were a number of counselors from South Portland, several from uh, Scarborough, five from Cape Elizabeth. Um, and so obviously the county budget is generating a lot more interest than it did even three years ago. Um, at that caucus, uh, Linda Boudreaux from South Portland was elected as one of the three members from District 2. Our counselor, Mike Moles, was also elected, and I was elected to a second term um, on that Budget Advisory Committee. So we'll get involved in that process. Their budget cycle is uh, calendar year, and so we'll be starting their process very shortly. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the minutes um, of the meeting held on July 14, 2003. I move approval as presented. Second. All in favor? I see six zero. And um, next, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. This is an opportunity for um, people who may be here tonight who would like to discuss items that are not on the agenda. Um, for those items that are on the agenda, you'll be able to speak to them later. And seeing none, we will move to item 32-0304, um, a public hearing on the proposed amendment to the revised official code of ordinances regarding council pay. And so at this time, if there is anyone from the public who would like to address the issue of Town Council pay. Well, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Councillor Roberts. I'd like to move that uh, Chapter 1, Article 2 of the revised official code be amended to read Section 1-2-3, Council pay. The annual compensation of the Town Council shall be $350 subject to an appropriation in the annual budget. Is there a second? I'll second for purposes of discussion. Okay. Is there any discussion? Councilor McGinty. Um, my only concern, and I don't, I don't have a problem with it really at all, except setting it 350. I don't. If it needs to be changed, either lowered, maybe next year they want to set it at 100 dollars, or the next year they want to set it at 500 dollars. I guess. Rather than lock in three hundred and fifty dollars, why don't we, if we could just amend it to say the council shall set the pay um, subject to an appropriation in the annual budget, and that way the council really can do pretty much anything they want, um, as far as as rather than be locked into three fifty. That, and that's my just for I guess to be more expedient maybe that way. 
Councillor Robert. The only pitfall in doing something like that is that theoretically um, a given council could set it much higher than it is now without a public hearing, and I don't think we want to go down that road. If we're planning on setting it higher, we should just uh, do it up front and do it right here. Um, my purpose in bringing it forward in this fashion was that I do not feel that everyone that lives in Cape Elizabeth is wealthy. There are people that may, in fact, uh, like to run for council who have child care costs. Uh, there are definitely out-of-pocket expenses that are incurred uh, serving the town in this capacity. The average uh, pay for other communities in the greater Portland area is $1,800. Uh, the $350 stipend uh, after taxes doesn't even amount to that. Quite frankly, it's not the dollar amount that I'm concerned about. I just don't give mine back. It's the, the fact that uh, I believe there should be an amount on the books uh, so that for those people that those out-of-pocket expenses are there and it might be an issue as to why they would not run, that would not be an impediment. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? I guess I, I would just say I, I will be opposing the motion. Uh, this is a community that has so many volunteers, um, the people who serve on the planning board, the school board, and do not receive any um, remuneration at all. So um, that's where I stand on it. But there's no further discussion. Oh, Councillor Mose. I want to voice my support for the motion. Um, as Jack said, there should at least be some remuneration stated on the books. Now we know that it hasn't been funded for this year, so we won't actually get paid for anything. So it's a kind of a new point. However, um, what we do has value to the town. If there was anyone that had serious opposition to in the public to paying the town councilors, I think they would have shown up here tonight by the fact that absolutely no one showed up to voice their opinion on it. It's really a non-issue. Uh, I feel that Jackson motion should be should be approved. Um, and if if we feel that the school boards and other boards should be paid, then that we should bring that up as a separate issue. Uh, if we feel they're not being appreciated. So. Any further discussion? All, right, all in favor? Three. All opposed? Motion failed. I don't believe we should leave it there, though. Um, it's not in our ordinance, and it's supposed to be. Part of the reason for doing putting this on for motion tonight was that we are remiss in not uh, having it as part of our code of ordinances when it's specified by charter that it's supposed to be. We'll go to the next item on the agenda. Item 33-03-04, consideration of approval of a design for a football scoreboard at one of the Gulf Crest fields. And there is um, in your town council package um, a description of the design of the scoreboard. And um, Mr. McGovern, would you please yeah, I explain this? Yeah, the council had asked for the specific design. You probably ended up with more information than you wanted with all the different specifications. But what, what isn't clear, because you have uh, black and white reproductions, is that the background of the scoreboard would be green. The Aquafina uh, sign in the middle of the scoreboard actually is, is, a, is a square with a blue background uh, in that, that square itself. Uh, the scoreboard itself is uh, 8 feet by 20 would be electrified to be an underground line going to it. And there's also a provision to add onto the top of it a two-foot extension that would uh, designate a field as the Gulf Crest field or whatever, uh, which would not have uh, otherwise been advertised. So I would encourage you uh, to authorize the application uh, to the planning board uh, for this. Do I have a motion? Maybe, should we have a motion? Pardon me? We should have a motion I'll make, first. I'll make the motion. And your motion is um, to 
that we approve the uh, design of the football scoreboard as presented in the August 1st application to the planning board. Do we have a second? Well, I'll second it. <laughs> Uh, discussion, Councillor Fritz. Um, I'm wondering whether this particular sign, the way it's configured, is it appropriate for the use for other types of sports that are used on on this? It's a multi-purpose field, not just a football field. Um, uh, I guess the town manager can answer it. I wasn't sure it was a. Yeah, sure. Yes. Uh, yes, no, Madam Chairman, Councillor Fritz, uh, th this is uh, you know perfectly fine for soccer, for lacrosse, for field hockey, and the rest of the sports. You, you, you'd simply use your home and your guests, and you wouldn't use the ball on in the to-go and the down. Right. So, you know that would remain there, but there would not be the lights would not be illuminated in those uh, areas. So, in in those sports, the only thing you show is the home and guests. Or there aren't other things that you want people to see. Yes, you would also show that the time remaining. The quarters or periods. The time remaining and periods or quarters were, were after. Okay, so that, that is on the sign. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I, I just want to say I, I have no objection to the sign. Um, I would just like to maybe send a message to the planning board that it might be more appropriate for the sign to be located between the two fields so it could be used for both fields and games that are played on both fields rather than in a few years having, because you, it's at, at one end, uh, we have another request for a second sign uh, in that spot. And it also seems like it would break would not break into the natural view that you see when when you um, in, in the placement that they have chosen. So I'd like to see it between the two fields, so it's appropriate for both fields to play. Any further discussion? Councilor McGinty. Now, Councilor Fritz brings up an interesting point, and, and I hadn't really thought about it. Um, did we get any input from the, the boosters or anybody? I mean, that, about making it available to both fields instead of just one. Yes, Mr. McGovern. Yeah, the once the sign is donated, it'll be owned by the town and be under the town's control. So you know what it's used for. It won't all be football. The other sports will be, you know, at the discretion of uh, the folks that do the day-to-day -day operations there. You know, my, you know, there are at times concurrent events on both fields, and you know the issue with having a scoreboard in the middle of the two fields is having confusion as to which particular uh, sporting event it applies to, uh, and that's the advantage of having it uh, at the far end of the uh, what is known as football field. Any further discussion? I do think citizens know the difference between football and soccer. I didn't want to create that impression. All in favor? I, I would just like to comment that I think that was a very good idea, putting it between the two fields. Uh, looking at the diagram, so I, where one field is offset from the other, it doesn't seem to match up well. Marianne, uh, Madam Chairman, if the council doesn't object, you know, we will bring that issue to the planning board's attention to see if, if they want to uh, have that as to be a consideration. All in favor? Opposed? 0 The next item is item 34-03-04 which is consideration of a report from the Appointments Committee regarding two vacancies on the trustees of the Thomas Memorial Library. And I'll look to Councillor Fritz, who is the chairman of the Appointments Committee. 
Yes, thank you. Um, the appointments committee met twice uh, interviewing applicants uh, for these two positions. Um, and we're very pleased to have uh, 10 people apply for these uh, unexpired terms. And we wonderful people that came to us. Uh, unfortunately, we only had two that we could uh, place. So um, you have before you um, the resumes of the individuals that the appointments committee is recommending. Um, first, Pat Breedenberg uh, to fill the um, term that expires one, January 1, 2004. And Deborah Tillman Stone to fill the term that expires January 1, 2005. So if I may move that the town council accept this recommendation from the appointments committee to fill the Thomas Memorial Library trustee. So Second. Moved. All in favor? Six zero. As, as usual, out just outstanding people with uh, excellent backgrounds for, for this type of uh, Position. Sorry, I skipped the discussion. And if I just that, might comment, it. Madam Chairman, that um, for people to look uh, in September, we will begin announcing terms that generally start on January. Um, so look for those uh, announcements of boards that have openings um, in say, September. Um, and send us your application. Thank you. Okay, item 350304 is consideration of a report from the town manager regarding town-owned land. And Mr. McGovern, if you could give us a little background. During the budget process, the town council requested a report on town-owned land. And uh, we put together a summary report of approximately 84 parcels that are owned by the town, a little over 1,000 acres. Uh, it, uh, you know, has a, they, land has a tremendous value. I'd like, first, I'd like to thank Jackie for these beautiful binders. These were recycled from somewhere. We were, were looking at reducing costs. So if, if they fall out of the binder, it's not from the, <laughs> the efforts of Jackie having tried to squeeze them in there. Uh, but anyway, uh, within the budget, there was a $75,000 proposed uh, revenue for property, which was a little, it engendered some discussion at the time. Uh, as part of that, it was agreed, well, we ought to look at all properties, and then I think everyone was aware, and if, if you'll excuse me for m m merging two items together, uh, there was also uh, some particular focus on the lot behind the town hall, behind the podium here that was once upon a time a child service station, station and then was an Irving, and uh, then was the, uh, uh, had, a, had a number of incarnations. Uh, it was a welding shop for a while, for a while as well, uh, most recently. Uh, what, what I'm recommending is that all of the pieces, first of all, that it, it, we, look, we know what the conservation pieces are and that those really not be further considered at this point. But that the Conservation Commission particularly look at this report and particularly focus on those, those parcels that have been tax acquired over the years or that are town-owned parcels by virtue of non-restricted gifts or however we happen to come across them, and to see if those are surplus to town property, uh, see if they're possibly going. I'm encouraging a more of an expedited process uh, for the lot that's behind here at the town hall. The, the reason being is uh, several. One is I look at the other lots that were potentially for sale. It, it's, it would be a challenge to reach the 75,000. I think we've all known that. Uh, since the budget was put together, even though you know, there was, I, I would admit there was a dance very much around that topic. Uh, secondly, uh, right now we, I've had interest from five parties in this lot in back of us. Uh, in, you know, all of these are folks that uh, I believe have, have the capital to do it and have the uh, the expertise to develop this property. And these aren't folks just coming out of the blue saying, I'd like to own that property. Uh, the land is assessed at about $152,000 uh, by uh, the town's tax assessor. Uh, I think while we know there's a ready market, when we know there's a ready market, is the time to 
that's most advantageous for the town to accept proposals for the property. I would recommend that uh, over the next month, and I think I did put an exact date, uh, that between now and September 8th, uh, we actually solicit the field proposal uh, for the acquisition of the service station lot uh, next to the town hall, and that as part of that process, uh, it be understood that the town council will make a decision on whether to sell that property or not to sell the property uh, based upon the purchase price offer amount, the long-term amount to be received from taxation of the property, the desirability of the proposed use in the town center, and such other factors as may be determined by the town council. In other words, you're looking at the long-term picture. What is this land? You'd be looking at this long-term. What is this land going to be used for? How will it be beneficial to the community in terms of both tax revenue as well as the aesthetic uh, of the town center and that, that any use would be keeping in the town center. Uh, the motion, you know, as, as proposed, the, the, the proposal as it is, really leaves open the possibility of the council, I think, really to test the market and to see what's out there and to see what might be proposed. It, it is not at all binding, but I think we do need to recognize that anyone who works, you know, in putting together a, a CL proposal does devote time, capital, and attention to it, and it shouldn't be done idly unless there's a real intent to do this. I know, you know, some may say, well, maybe this ought to be referred to some committee or whatever, but, you know, my, my sense is, is that, uh, you know, th there, there is a real, com real interest in the property as well as, uh, uh, you know, with, if the whole council, particularly if the whole council were here this evening, uh, you know, it, it's clear to me that it, it is the intent of the, most of the town council to, to try to see what interest is out there. So I think we could process this thing to death. Uh, and, you know, my fear is that so if we did that, the opportunities might pass us by. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Before we discuss the issue of the land on the north side of Town Hall, can we have a motion on the rest of this report? I'll move that uh, we send the report uh, on the town-owned property uh, to the conservation for their um, input back on that recommendation to the council on whether it's surplus land. Second. Any discussion? Councilor swift -Tiata. Um I just wanted to uh, propose that we set some sort of a date for the conservation commission, some sort of deadline. Um, I'm not sure exactly what would be appropriate, but just so it's not completely open-ended. Pardon me? I think I'll, they're doing quite a bit of work right now trying to get the, the bridges into the golf press and working on purple, loose, right, right. Eagle, loose right. some of that. I, I'd suggest by the end of the year. Uh, okay. I mean, that's, uh, give us that's plenty fine. Of time. Children are sick for the years. Happy to amend that motion to the December 31st. Okay. Any further discussion? Well, that's an awful long time away. I, would, I think wait until the end of the year, then it takes us another month before we act on it. Uh, if we want to have it, a plot of land sold within this fiscal year and closed on, um, we might want to make that more like October or November. This, this is, just so we're clear, this is not the plot of land on right. the north side of Town Hall. Correct. Okay. Any further discussion? Councillor Zwift-Teata. Um, I, I understand um, Councillor Moles' concern. However, I think we have to realize that um, the Conservation Commission is made up of a bunch of very dedicated volunteers um, who are working very hard right now on a number of other priorities that we have set for them. And uh, I'm just afraid of overburdening this group of volunteers who, who are already working on things that we have previously determined as priorities for the town. So I, I still would like to stick with the December 31st um, deadline just because I think it's more reasonable in terms of their workload. 
Okay. I am, I appreciate okay. the concerns, but I don't know if they have the capability, you know, the capacity, uh, the time to get it done sooner than that. All in favor of the motion as amended? Six zero. Now, um, we'll go to the next item, which is the land on the north side of Town Hall and whether or not to accept sealed bids. Can I have a motion or does anyone want to make a motion? I'm sorry, I'm operating at half speed here. Um, I would like to move that um, the lot the lot be offered for sale on an as-is basis for an amount not less than the assessed value and the town manager be authorized to receive sealed proposal due by, by September 8, 2003 at 3 p.m. and then the council will go forth and decide after that what they wanted to actually do with the yeah. it's accepted. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. <laughs> what a surprise that it's the two of us. <laughs> Any discussion? Councilor McGinty. Um, I disagree with the town manager um, that this shouldn't be uh, looked into further. This lot and I brought some of the emails and letters that we've received over the last six or eight months regarding the lot next door, and there's a lot of emotion on both sides. Some people like to see it developed as a park and pretty much left as a park. Other people would just soon get it on the tax rolls. As a council, we've discussed cutting off a piece of it and using it as a, a buffer, buffer around town hall as part of our town hall landscaping plan um, it's been a lot of discussion we have two new counselors that I know certainly Mike can speak for himself tonight um, Dave's not here um, whether they've got all the information I also believe we received a petition from like 35 people to leave it one way or another um, there's been a lot of discussion and I'm not sure as a as a town council you know that we shouldn't hear from people whether it's a formal public hearing or just a public forum and get more input from the people and what they like to do with this property. Um, I'd hate to see us be pushed into a situation where because we have to come up with $75,000 in revenue that we somehow hastily um, make this decision. Um, and, you know, we're talking about three, three weeks or so, I guess, September 8th, or a month, four weeks. Um, and. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure if we've really sat down as a council. I know we've gone through the, the renderings from uh, uh, John Mitchell, and, you know, he has some good ideas, but we can't guarantee that those things happen or how they happen. And I'm just, I'm just concerned that we're not getting enough input um, from the public on this before uh, moving forward. That's my only concern, my only concern. Councilor Sociata. Um. Well, I don't know about everybody who's watching, but I'm sure most of the council is aware that I have been in favor of selling the lot next door um, for quite some time. It was acquired originally by the town uh, for the purpose of building a new uh, police, putting police station there. Um, and that whole objective has been rendered moot because the police station, for a variety of reasons, was built across the street. I think it would be wise to return this to the tax roll. I do not feel that this process as proposed by the town manager will be tying the council's hands in any way in that the council, as I somewhat inadequately expressed in my motion when I was rambling a little bit, the, the council will be able to, re, to look at the bids and decide then whether there is a successful bidder. I don't think we are compelled to take any of the bids. And we can see what is proposed. And frankly, at that point, I think we'll have a better idea what these five parties 
are proposing to see if it's anything at all n near to some of the proposals we saw um, from the landscape architects before. So I, I think it would be wise for the council to get sort of a reality check as to, it sounds from the town manager as though there is a significant level of interest the town council has voted in its, in its budget adoption process that we need to find $75,000 from the sale of property this year. And I don't think that is what is necessarily having to drive this, but it is an important factor because if we don't come up with it from the sale of property, it's going to have to come from somewhere else somehow um, because we can't print the money out back or anything like that. So um, I, I think this process will allow us to review what these interested parties might be interested in doing and would still get preserve the council's control over um, what type of development we might be interested in having next door to a certain extent. I mean, it's not a guarantee, but at least we have an idea of what the marketplace is telling us would be an appropriate use of the property. And I, I do think we should divide, divest ourselves of that property because it's not needed anymore for the purpose that it was required for. Okay, Mark. Yes, I, um, I also believe we should return that land to the public tax rolls, however, from the being a new counselor and only having seen a few sketches, uh, the sketch which appealed to me the most was one which had a portion, the portion closest to the town hall uh, as a small park and then sell the rest of it to a commercial use. Um, I have a problem with putting something out to a sealed bid that we're not simply gonna accept one of those bids right away because it takes a lot of work to, to put together a bid, uh, to line up the money to act on a bid if it's, if it's accepted. Uh, I'm concerned from my experience with other commercial properties as a mortgage broker that we have dramatically under-assessed the value of that lot. And I think before we put it out for bid, uh, it's a very s small fee to pay to have another assessor give us another opinion of the value of that lot. Especially commercial land here in Cape Elizabeth, there's very little of it, especially in our downtown zone. Uh, I think it's worth more than we we're thinking it's worth. Um, and then finally, I think we should discuss this further. Uh, again, being a new counselor, I am not party to the early discussions. I know you've had a, quite a few discussions uh, on this subject. But, but I think we should be developing the package and what we want to see as a council and as a town, and then writing the bid package very tightly that someone, if they fit in with our vision, will move forward on that. And from what I've seen, it's a very attractive package that you've looked at so far. And I don't know why anyone wouldn't jump on that right away, but that's, those are my thoughts on the subject. I'd like to see it return to the tax rolls, but I, I think we need to have at least one more month's worth of discussion on how we how we do this. Councillor Fritz? Yeah, um, I mean, I generally believe we, we should select the, the simplest part kind of concept uh, for that parcel, because I think it's in a very important place in our town center between the historic town hall and the historic homestead of a builder that's had a great impact on our, our community um, and a lovely, a lovely house. Um, so that is my tendency. Uh, I think the process is, I mean, I think putting it out to an IFC at this point is, is at the wrong place. I think we need to have the discussions. We paid $5,000 to have John Mitchell come up with some ideas. We've had a lot of input from the public over a several years period of time saying they want a park, and I'd like to explore that more. But when John Mitchell made the presentations to the council, we were in the middle of the budget process, and we said we would take it to a workshop this summer, and we really haven't had that workshop and that discussion 
it seems to me it wouldn't be fair um, to proposal, proposers if we really wanted a park or if the town ends up saying we wanted a park. Uh, I think we should have a clear sense, as, as Councillor Moles has said, of what we want and what we're asking proposers to do because they do put in a great deal of work in it. So if it's half part, then that's what we should be asking people to present. So I would prefer tabling this to a workshop. Councillor Roberts. We do need to move forward with it one way or the other. This is a budget item. Uh, I would like to get at least part of it back on the tax rolls. I have no problem. Nobody's forcing anyone to uh, put any, in any bids or put, put money into it. And I'm sure that there are, as the manager stated, several people out there that would be willing to give us some ideas. And then when we went to a workshop, we'd have some concept of what was available that we could then debate amongst ourselves. So I don't really believe that it's bringing the cart before the horse. So I would be prepared to vote tonight to solicit those bids and see what they brought forth, and then we could discuss them. I'm also prepared to vote. I'm sorry, Councilor Go, Go ahead. Uh, if I might ask, uh, <coughs> Madam Chairman, the town manager about the fact of the sealed bids not being binding, uh, what position that puts us in. Is that okay? Is it going to be a yeah. problem or yeah we'll you know based on whatever the council passes this evening or passes at some point there would be a request for proposals that specifically makes clear that the property is being sold on an as-is basis it is specifically made clear that the council re reserves the right to determine whatever factors it deems as, as the draft indicates and that the council uh, uh, reserves the right to accept or reject any or all bids uh, that would all be provided one would not get too too much involved in the debate but i think the real advantage of, of the proposal that's before you is that you would know real world what someone is willing to do for you uh you know the the concept for in the concept of you know trying to design by a council committee that that does not you know that does not have i don't want to insult the council but that doesn't have the expertise of, you know, understanding the market, uh, understanding, you know, the, the business returns that are necessary, you know, I, I think is, is a little bit challenging. What, what I see as unique about this process is w this would really give you as a group a, an opportunity to sit down uh, with someone who you're interested in, who has developed an interesting proposal, uh, to sit down, discuss it with them, debate them with them, and to raise these questions of, you know, would you, you know, could there be a little more land for park? What if we moved this here? What if we did that? And, you know, eventually this would be a negotiation uh, that the public could, you know, know what's going on, although they might not be involved in every detail, but know what's going on. And then, you know, the purchase, the actual final purchase and sale agreement, you know, could in fact then have the requirements that are mutually agreed upon uh, by both parties. You know, otherwise, you know, I, I, I think, you know, we're never going to know exactly where we're at, with one exception, and that is that whatever goes on that lot would be totally governed by the town center zoning. And, you know, the whole issue of, you know, what does the community want? The, the community has gone through a real extensive process in terms of determining what the town center zoning is. You know, we, we don't have drive-throughs. We don't have, uh, you know, buildings with over a 5,000 square foot print footprint and you know the, the good thing about you know anything that comes in is that it does need to be in keeping with the vision uh the community has already developed so even you know even if the council you know at any given point wanted to waiver from that it still needs to go to the planning board based on the town center zoning so you know i i can understand if the council wants a little more time but you know i'm not you know as i intimated earlier i'm not sure where process is going to get us in the long run when we're not dealing with real world proposals and the real world economics of uh, you know someone that might be interested in making an investment in this property and uh, not only making the $75,000 and then some but also uh, tax revenue in the future as well and, and whatever other aesthetics uh, uh, that would also be an improvement to the community that you might see as desirable. 
Madam Chair? Yes, Councillor Swift, yeah. If I could make one further comment. It seems to me that with this decision we're making, the upside of, of a yes vote, of, of deciding to do this field bid process, which is not binding on the Council, the upside is that we'll have better information about the real world and what might be possible, what we might gain financially, what we might gain aesthetically, what we might gain um, for the tax rolls, uh, all sorts of things like that. But it also seems to me that if we're going to look at the downsides, the risks of voting yes, is I don't see any downsides since it's not binding. If we get the information and we don't like it, then we're no worse off than we were before, since it's not binding. So there's no risk for the council that I can see in going through this bid process. And as far as it not being fair to bidders, I think the bidders will, are business people who, if they don't want to bid, will not. They will make a business decision that is in their interest. And if they are interested enough, they will um, go along with the bid process. So I see an upside, but no downside. Exactly. Uh, the only downside I see is to vote against the motion mm. where we have five parties who've indicated an interest and the town manager has indicated they're all parties who are financially and technically capable. Uh, it seems to me in a market where in mortgage rates are currently rising, um, now is the time and I, I'm not too concerned, Councillor Moles, about the uh, assessed value because I think with at least five interested parties, I, I'm not sure there'll be five bidders, but if we have multiple parties, um, it's unlikely that the bids will all come in at that lower level. I think we're going to see some competition. And again, to the extent that they're non-binding, uh, there's negotiation that follows. So uh, I think that the only downside to our vote tonight is to vote no and um, put the skids to what could be five very exciting concepts. Councillor McGinty. I think the downside is if we can't agree tonight what we want there and we're going to have bidders that bid who aren't going to have a concept of what we would like there. Um, I think there is a downside to the bidders that for them to uh, spend their time, effort and, and cash to make a bid, not even knowing what the council has in mind. But, Councilor it's not, it, but it seems to me that as long as they're fully informed as to what the process is, they can make that decision for themselves. I, I would not think we should be deciding for business people whether they want to, to make a bid. I mean, if they want to make a bid, they'll make a bid. If if we put this sealed business, a uh, sealed bid process out in front of them and we had a thundering silence and no one bid, well then we'd know nobody was interested in that type of process. But if you get four or five people bidding, I think it shows that they're interested. I'd like to move the question. Okay. Point of clarification. In order for this motion to pass, it needs what, four votes? Four votes. Thank you. All in favor of the motion? All opposed? Which case? The motion passes. Next item is uh, item 37-0304, consideration of proposed changes to the solid waste ordinance. And could the town ma manager Provide us with some background. Yeah, I'll I'll work myself into it if you if you if you'll allow me for just a second. I, I do want to indicate that this item will not be on your agenda in September. This is you'll be getting the proposals and we'll need to be scheduling a time uh, for the council to meet to review those proposals and to decide your, your next step. So I wouldn't want anyone uh, with tabs out there to think that uh, a decision is going to be made made in September. And I would imagine too if, that it very likely will be an executive session, work session, uh, workshop that we might next be discussing the bids at. Yeah. Matters of property acquisition <coughs> and disposition are allowed to be discussed uh, 
in executive session. However, I think, you know, as, as has been discussed, everyone is fully aware of the, uh, the public's interest in this, and that does not foreclose, you know, once you narrowed it down, you actually, you know, before doing a final vote to having a public hearing and having a, a more extensive uh, process once folks might see what's actually being proposed. Can I, uh, I mean, I don't really see the point of having it be an executive session um, that where all these ideas are discussed. Um, I, I think we should move on to the next item. I'm going to rule that out of order and we can discuss that as we get further into the process. Do you recognize me to talk about solid waste? Yes, please. <laughs> uh, regional waste systems, as everyone knows, have been going through some uh, challenges and some opportunities in the future to, uh, to try to uh, improve the flow. One of the things that they're doing is requesting all of the municipalities to uh, require all the commercial hauls to send all their waste there. When we looked at our ordinance, we're already pretty close to doing that. But yet there was some tinkering uh, that needed to be done to make it clear that there was a uh, that there was a licensing process as well for commercial haulers. So what we have done, uh, working with Bob Malley and scaling liberally from South Portland, uh, is to uh, develop some proposed amendments to the ordinance that do a number of things that would require commercial haulers to uh, be licensed that would set an annual licensing fee, that would change the name officially of the property from the Cape Elizabeth Refuge Disposal Area to the Cape Elizabeth Recycling Center, uh, that would allow more extensive opportunities for commercial haulers as defined in the ordinance to use our own recycling center. Right now they're prohibited in the ordinance from using it. Uh, and the folks that pick up trash, for example, a number of houses would try to tell them they have to go to regional waste if they're doing it to get paid. This would allow them to continue to use our facility, provided that the material is only coming from Cape Elizabeth, and provided that uh, they do not have uh, mechanized compacting equipment, because the whole purpose of that was to try to keep the, the major bulk out of there. One controversial proposal here uh, that I imagine will be discussed uh, at length uh, is we're looking at an annual permitting procedure that in order to make sure that the folks using it were not getting waste from a lot of other places, that everyone be required to get an annual permit that would be give out, given out and the cost of the permit would be $5 annually for each vehicle. Uh, there's also uh, several other miscellaneous provisions, including dealing with the issue of uh, pressure-treated wood, although we actually call it here arsenic-treated something or other. Uh, that, that's about it. The recommendation is that this goes to the Ordinance Committee, and I'm sure they'll want to spend some time uh, working on it if that's the uh, vote of the council to send it in. And just as a matter of clarification, after it comes back from the ordinance committee, it would be set up for public yeah. hearing if we were to enact. Well, the, the council could, as a whole, could workshop it, whatever you want to do after the back to Council McGinty. I move that we uh, refer this to the ordinance committee. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Council Mull. Once it comes back, we can then amend it if we so desire. Okay. Councillor Roberts. I also have a question. One of the comments uh, in Mike's memo here, uh, the town manager, was that the asset treated wood is a hazardous waste and we do not accept hazardous waste. And I believe road sand is now listed as a hazardous waste. And is not oil also considered a hazardous waste? Waste oil? Yes. Yeah, but we, we do have a license for handling that, that particular waste oil. Well, I would hope that the ordinance committee would look at perhaps having a roll-off where a person could pay a small fee to drop off the pressure-treated lumber, because otherwise it's going into the waste stream. It's not going to Scarborough. Uh, reiterate that, I guess. So, thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor of referring this to the ordinance committee? Seven, six, zero. Next item on the agenda is item 380304, consideration of a recommendation from the Conservation Commission to appoint an Alewife Restoration Committee. And there is a memo in our package, and the town manager would like to 
add anything? Yeah, the, we've been working for a number of years with what is now Southern Maine Community College uh, to look at restoring Alewife to uh, Alewife Brook. Uh, the students have actually devoted a lot of time. They've done some restocking. It's, uh, I went to a meeting over at SM Community College with, uh, uh, with Maureen, I believe, was there, Jody Jordan, who owns most of the property, uh, abutting the brook, as well as with Mike Duddy, the chairman of the Conservation Commission. Uh, you know, I don't know the answer to this. An awful lot of it depends on the cooperation of, of Jody Jordan as, as the primary property owner. I would suggest that you know the request, since it has come in, go to the Conservation Commission and would encourage them, particularly as they look at this, to um, involve the property owners who live along the brook, uh, so that they understand their role in this as well as uh, the potential impacts uh, on their property. Can I clarify? Um, I, I thought it has come from, from the, the Conservation yeah. Commission. Oh yeah. And because it Ordinance contains, committee, I meant to say. because right. it, the yes, it did. Pot. I'm sorry. Because it. <laughs> contains a draft alewife ordinance. I misspoke. It will go to the ordinance committee if there is a motion. So moved. Is there a second? I need a second. Um, I'll, I'll second it for purposes of this discussion. Okay, Councillor Robert. When I was reading this over, I, I also had some concerns. It did not look like the neighbors of Alawine Brook, primarily the Jordans, had been involved in this process yet. And before we start appointing committees and everything, I would think that we want to get clear uh, with Jody that he is going to be a willing partner to this. There's not much sense putting a lot of effort into it if he's not. Uh, yeah, I, I'm in total agreement with Councillor Robertson. I think that's one thing the ordinance committee should ascertain uh, from him prior to uh, making a recommendation to the council as, uh, as the main property owner there, you know, really what is his interest. Uh, you know, he, he has attended, he, we had a nice luncheon one day over at the McKernan Center, uh, and Jody was there and seemed very interested in it, but, but we all left there, I think, with some un unanswered questions, and you know, I would hope that maybe the ordinance committee uh, could meet, mm -hmm. did I say the wrong committee again? No. The Ordinance Committee could meet with uh, Jack Nay, the, the professor over at Southern Maine Community College, as well as with Jody and uh, other interesting parties. I know this is a, you know, I, I, if you notice this came in in June and it didn't get on the July agenda, it's August. It, it isn't a, you know, a, a simple issue. In some respects, it's a simple issue, but in others, uh, you know, I think it's important we do look at it. It is something that's looking at a, uh, you know, a natural resource and that also impacts property. So I, I think it's worthy of some time being spent uh, by uh, our great audience committee on this. <laughs> Councilor McGinty. Um, I know Mike's not going on here, this or Maureen, but perhaps we should get a report back from them before the ordinance committee starts working on ordinance about how, what, or what level of involvement the abutters would like to have in this, if any, um, rather than have us meet as a committee and have to try to work, you know, it's tough enough to get three people together in a given time, and, but have the staff uh, give us a report back, considering he's apparently already done some work with the uh, major abutter on this. Okay, hmm. uh, I just want to mention, as has already been mentioned, that the brook, 80% of the length of the brook flows through Jody Jordan's farm, Alewife Brook Farm. Uh, he does an excellent job, water quality wise, it's a working farm. Uh, I don't think this is ready to move this forward without more input from him uh, or more discussion amongst uh, the council. There could be some unforeseen negative fallout from this, both on the property values along the brook, if we put some over restrictive item in, uh, as well as an impact on uh, Jody's George, Jody Jordan's farm, where I don't think we want to do anything to uh, injure his farm. We'd like to see that as farmland rather than as, as built up housing development. We wouldn't want to do something that would force him into uh, an already strained position that would force him to sell out the, the lower half of the farm and put housing along Alewife Cove Road. So I, I'd say this needs a little bit more. Um, 
I may be um, just not getting the point here, but it's unclear to me why this would be going at this point to the Ordinance Committee. It's sort okay. of in line with Councilor McGinty's comments. My understanding, I'm on the Ordinance Committee, I mean, although I am a new member, but it's my understanding that we're supposed to deal with ordinances, and, and I, I'm, unless there needed to be some sort of ordinance about setting up this committee, it doesn't seem like an ordinance committee kind of thing to me. I'm going to ask so I, town managers I need, to I need some your information. I'm just unclear as to why it would be coming to the ordinance committee. The Department of Marine Resources yes. requires that one of these alewife programs be established by local ordinance. And you can see there's not only the committee, but in the, the pages that follow, uh, there's little page after page of uh, provisions that are being recommended by the Department of Marine Resources. So in order to look at this at all, it would have to require an ordinance. You know, on the other, so that, that's why it goes to the Ordinance Committee. Is okay. Because they the other pieces with Jody is, you know, I've had several discussions with him. I really don't know where he stands. And, you know, in keeping with, you know, some of the earlier discussion of the Council this evening, is, you know, hearing from the public, I, I think it would be really helpful if, if the tr three individuals on the Council could sit down with Jody in the format of an Ordinance Committee and, and get a commitment from him one way or the other. Uh, because, you know, either we, we need to know that he doesn't want to do it or that he doesn't want to do it. He, he himself is personally interested in the alewives. Uh, you harvest them as for the purposes of lobster, of lobster bait, and he's in, the, he's in that business. So, you know, he, he sees it some as a benefit to him, but, but he also has questions about it. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I don't, the staff could talk to him, but, but I think it's really important for the elected officials mm -hmm. to hear directly from him yay or nay and to understand what his what his issues and concerns uh, may be and you know i uh you know the staff has talked thank you that Lord. clarifies for me why the ordinance committee thank you it's still unclear to me about the ordinance committee um i mean i'm all for restoring natural habitat and that sort of thing um i presume there used to be alewives in there were books and there aren't now. I, I don't know that. I don't have an idea of what the cost of this thing is, what the responsibility of the town or anybody. Um, I saw a, a, um, a, an alewife go fish ladder and, and that up in the Rockland area just this spring and it, it seems like a really exciting kind of Thing, both educationally and for the fishermen and natural resources, but it still seems to me that the council should sit and discuss whether we should set up this committee that's suggested before the ordinances and talk with not only George Jordan but other fishermen, other lobstermen in the town, other property owners on, on that group. So it seems to me a workshop is the more any further discussion I I think that sending it to the ordinance committee is a good way to get it started there's a lot um, on the council agenda in the next few months and to have the ordinance committee look at it it is a proposed ordinance um, they are experienced in that um, and it just seems to me to make sense as a place to get the ball rolling and to have some conversations with the interested parties who whoever they may be um, it seems to me something goes to the ordinance committee once the council has set the policy and the ordinance committee simply sets it into words and law not to discuss the issue and have public, you know, meetings or something. That it doesn't seem appropriate to me. Councilor Roberts. <laughs> I, Sorry, I, think I, Council, I, I have to agree with Councilor Fritz. I think we may be ahead of ourselves on it. Um, I think a lot of us have reservation moving forward without knowing what the neighbors down there want. I, I, I guess before I would vote in the affirmative, 
I want to know that we're not going to be ruffling feathers and that it's something that the citizens want us to move forward on. I don't want to ruffle any feathers for sure, but uh, on this one I'm not looking to alienate property owners um, or, and bug them about things. Um, if I'm on the ordinance committee and I'm perfectly okay now that I sort of understand this a little better. I'm fine with us being the ones. It seems a little wacky to me, but I don't care. I mean, we can we can talk to them and just come back, not with an ordinance, but with a recommendation to the council and then talk about it. I mean, process-wise, it seems a little strange to me, but I'd like to see something done with this. I think it's a good idea. So it's just process-wise, how do we deal with it? Not to mention it's state law, but um, well, but, you know, we have a, a, a proposed project manager here. Um, we, the, the Conservation Commission might want to have some input, at least, into the project. They recommend that it be done, and we set up a committee. Um, but I, I think we really do have the car before the horse here, where we haven't even talked to the project people, we haven't talked to the people going to be involved in this, that maybe we should have sit down as a council and say, yeah, this sounds like a good idea, yes, the neighbors are interested and then send it to the Ordinance Committee and take it from there. I just think you need to have more information. I think the Council needs to have more information, or should so, have more information. So would it be better, you think, to work, just have a workshop with the whole Council on it? And Right, invite the proposed project manager, and if the abutters want to appear, that's fine too, and just get, a, get all the information first, and then get, kind of come to a consensus with everybody involved, including the abutters, including the project manager, that yes, this is something we want to do, and then ship it off the Ordinance Committee and we can do it. Quick point of information, do we have an open workshop date? I don't have my calendar with me, but do we have a date that's, you know, not I'm sure eight we can months find from now? So I'm sure we can find a date. Currently scheduled dates, the earliest would probably be October. Okay. Is there any time? There is no time frame set out in the information we have. I mean, is this a project that needs to be done <clears throat> this fall, you know, the spring, the summer? I have no idea. There's the kind of information I'm looking for. I, I personally am fine with doing the work, but I just want to make sure we don't lose the project. I don't really care process wise how it's done. Oh. So if the rest of the council is, feels better about doing the workshop, I'm fine with that. You, I, can't, I can't even remember what the motion was. Just let me say both. <laughs> the motion was to refer it to the ordinance committee. Okay. Tell me again. I just want to be clear, lest you know, someone <coughs> out there can imagine you know, some big alewife farm. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've gone to a couple of meetings on this, including one with Jody, and as I mentioned down there, what's now Southern Maine Community College. And alewife only runs during about a a one-week period of the season. It's simply a matter of uh, putting out a, you know, a, a couple of buckets or catchment type things to catch the alewife as they go by. It, it's probably the only person who would be harvesting the alewife would be Jody Jordan uh, because he is the chief market in town and he's also the, uh, the major property owner so they'd probably be the deference, you know, he's a Jody alewife. So it's mainly providing him a resource. You know, the, the real issue is, is, you know, in order to have this accomplished, does he want to work in a partnership with Southern Maine Community College so that these kids, uh, they're not kids, so these, these students, you know, learn about the resource and, uh, you know, get, get some real life habitat protection experience. Uh, you know, I, I just, you know, sense that everyone is making this into much more than it really is. If, if Jody doesn't want to do it, fine. Thank you, Southern Maine Community College. This isn't going to work out. It doesn't work out unless you get permission to, to go on Jody's property. So, you know, and, and you know, the, it's been sitting around, and it's just a matter of getting a commitment from Jody one way or the other. And, uh, and I think for the council to find out more about it, but, you know, you, you're going to end up knowing a, a lot about Alewife. And, you know, I, I think that's good. I think that's positive, <laughs> but you know, there are a lot of other matters for the council as well, and you know, I'm not sure if you need seven members of the council to be dealing intensively with ill life. If, I believe I was the one who made the motion. You were the one who made the motion. It was I would like to withdraw my motion because 
I understand the um, town manager's comments about the seven of us not needing to spend as much time, and we probably won't need to spend as much time. On the other hand, I've heard a significant chunk of the council express an interest in hearing about like <laughs> farming or whatever it's called, running or I don't know nothing really. Um, and so, you know, if a significant chunk of the council wants to be involved, I think we should just have a workshop. So I'd like to withdraw my motion about sending it to the ordinance committee. And, and secondary accept that. And then I'd like to make a new motion to send it to a workshop. And just let's not all get carried away with making it a mega workshop. It, it can be an okay small workshop. At, at the earliest convenient date, and we'll invite Jody Jordan and the professor, who else? Everyone else. Okay. Do we need a second? Second. A second. second. Well, I heard a second. <laughs> All in favor? Amendment. All in All favor? Okay. <laughs> Six zero. Go back to the pain issue. Mm. Okay. Um, and I thought that was one of the non-controversial <laughs> items on the agenda. <laughs> Moving right along. Um, item 3903.04 is consideration of adoption of the town council goals for 2003-2004. The goals which were drawn up in council workshops last month are in your town council package. And perhaps we should read them for the people who are at home. So I will do that. The first goal is ensure that quality services and programs are maintained with as minimal impact as possible on the property tax rate. Continue quarterly reviews of expenditures and revenues by the Finance Committee. Set targets for any adjustment in the fiscal year 2005 tax rate prior to budget submissions. Participate with other communities in communicating to state decision makers the need to increase state school subsidies and to study the state tax system. Communicate to Cumberland County Commissioners to state decision makers and to other cities and towns the need to restrain future growth of the county budget. Review and use as a resource an updated and expanded study which benchmarks the cost of municipal and school services with other communities. Meet with elected officials in surrounding communities to discuss opportunities for regional cooperation and possible expenditure savings. Explore opportunities to raise additional revenue at Fort Williams Park. And the second um, major goal is to increase opportunities for interaction of the town council with boards and commissions. And under that, to conduct an annual orientation for all town board and commission members to participate in a workshop with the planning board to review proposed changes in ordinances, to participate in a workshop with the Zoning Board of Appeals to review any issues that the Zoning Board of Appeals may have in interpreting the zoning ordinance. Have a council member attend at least one meeting of each board and commission. Number three, review and act upon the proposed new master plan for Fort Williams Park. Number four, in cooperation with interested parties and other property owners, review options for improving the town hall lot. Number five, begin implementation of the master plan for the Gulf Crest Trail. Number six, receive and review a report on roadway and pedestrian safety in the town center zone. Number seven, act upon the report from the Refuse Materials Handling Committee, including resolving issues related to the disposition of pressure-treated wood and universal waste, and to consider changes in the solid waste ordinance to respond to issues at RWF. Number eight, to realize at least 75,000 in revenue from the sale of town property 
after reviewing a report of town owned property and number nine to provide input into the county charter process and the deliberations regarding the Cumberland County Civic Center. I have a motion. I'd like to motion that we adopt town council goals for 2003-2004 as read. Second. Any discussion? Councilor McGinty. I'm referring to number seven regarding refuse uh, materials handling committee. Maybe not directly with them, and I probably need Mike to answer this question. Um, during the budget goals discussion, I brought up a law that was passed by the legislature and appropriated something like on the order of $455,000 for hazardous waste disposal. And I believe Mike circulated that to all the, found got the information and circulated that to all the counselors. Um, so you should have received that at some some point. And I, I didn't bring my copies to my desk at home, of course I walked out without it. But I, I wonder if we would like to firm up one of these um, goals to have as, as one of our goals to uh, work um, through that state legislation um, to conduct a hazard and tap into that funding to conduct a hazardous materials collection um, program process day, whatever you want to call it, um, and um, try to do whatever we need to do to make that happen and even Mike can we, we would hope to do that as has been successfully done in the past uh, through regional waste systems where they would set up a, a regional program for all the member communities and that folks could bring, then bring material to any of the sites on any of the given dates uh, within the regional waste system uh, catchment area. And I know there's been some discussions that I've been doing on that. And can, can and we can tap into that funding from the state to do that? I mean, it wouldn't... We, I, I think the plan would be that we would not individually apply for the grant. The regional waste would do it on our behalf okay, as part that's of the regional plan. That's that's okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's zero. Mm. Next item is item 40-0304, consideration of a proposal to amend the charter to provide for changes in the procedure for citizen votes on capital projects and large expenditure items. This is in your package at my request. Uh, there is a memo in it. And um, the background is, as you recall, when we were discussing the kindergarten and high school last spring, um, there were um, comments from the public that it didn't seem um, fair or equitable that um, certain municipal projects um, were um, built without a public referendum and that the school project um, would be um, set to public referendum. So what I am proposing is that we um, discuss, and what I'm particularly asking the council to do tonight, it would be simply to set for a public hearing in September a proposed charter change that would treat all projects, municipal and school alike, um, based on the size of the project. And um, what I've drafted is that if a project, a capital project, exceeds one and a half percent of the total um, valuation of the town, which is approximately $1.6 million, it would always go out to um, citizen approval. And if it is less than that, then the council would approve it. Um, secondly, it, right now, ex excuse me, point of information, and if it's less than that, the council would approve it? The council would approve it without a public, I'm sorry, without could. a public referendum. Could approve it as could as approve proposed. it. That's not what your proposal proposes. So I, I thought that it? what I proposed was that the council, I'm sorry, would approve it. And I, I, I don't know if we need to get into discussion, but as written here, says the proposed amendment 
would require public approval of any single capital project or single capital expenditure, the cost of which exceeds 1.5 percent, as you said. Nowhere here does it say the converse, that anything under that would have to be approved, um, would only be able to be approved by a town council vote. As, you, as it has been drafted here, smaller projects than that could still be sent to referendum. It's just that it would be mandatory, as you've written here, it would be mandatory that the big ones, the over 1.5% ones, um, were sent to referendum. That's true. That's true. And in fact, I think it would, the council could always ask for an advisory referendum below that dollar amount. I just wanted to make that clear because what, what you just said was not okay. quite what, what thank was you. proposed. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, I'm, thank you. I'm glad for the clarification. So I was hoping that we could set this for public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, I did not want to make the process the issue last spring when we were discussing the kindergarten and the high school, but yet I felt that um, it, it was a valid concern and certainly a perception um, by many in the town that there's two ways of treating projects. So um, again, what I'm asking tonight is that we set this for public hearing and then we could hear from the public in September. If it is not set for public hearing tonight and there is not a public hearing in September, it would be too late to put it on the ballot in November and all charter changes require um, a citizen approval. So, Councilor McGinty. Actually, that's that's one of my concerns. I don't, and, and let me say overall, I agree with the proposal overall, though I have some questions and concerns, uh, particularly about the numbers. Um, but once again, I, I think this is, to change the charter, perhaps the council should, should sit down and go over this. I don't see the urgency to get this on the November ballot, understanding that the next opportunity won't be until what, May, I guess, right? Um, and understand that, but um, I, I have some, some questions about particularly the percentages, why we use percentages, and, um, and a lot of philosophical, if nothing else, um, that every time our evaluation goes up, the amount will go up. And it should be, if people are, the way I look at it is every time your valuation goes up, that means your taxes go up, and probably you want to be voting on, it, you know, projects at a lower amount as opposed to, it, they're always being out of, out of reach, I guess, as the valuation keeps going up, the project amount keeps going up, and they're always kind of out of reach if you're just kind of below the, the radar. And so that's just one of my concerns, that I think, and i just like to see us sit down and discuss it and go over the the fine points like what we need to send out, what we can send out, um, and have a discussion, um, you know, among ourselves before we have the public hearing. And that's just my concern. That Councillor Roberts. Ditto. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I believe that in general, um, I, th I think this is a good idea. Um, I didn't have a chance to look at it until 4.30 this afternoon because I just came back today. But um, <coughs> I believe it in general it's a good idea. In general, I, well, not in general. I, I trust the voters on these sorts of issues. Um, however, uh, I agree with Councillor McGinty and Councillor Roberts that this feels a little rushed. And I, I know it probably couldn't be helped but it seems to me there, there aren't any big issues on the ballot. Councillor Moll leaned over and said there's, there's nothing coming up in the next six months, so it's not going to have an impact on any, um, anything new at this point. Um, I mean, there's nothing new coming up. I know there are referendum questions this fall, but uh, I, I, I would like to make sure when we make a, a charter change that we get a chance to think it through. It's like the Alewife Brook thing only much bigger. And if we're going to give some time to the Alewife Brook thing, I'd like to give some more time to the charter change because I, I just want to make sure we, we think it through very carefully, um, the numbers and the language and, and everything. So 
but in general, I, I think it's a, a good idea, I think, but I, I need to think about it some more. I um, agree with all of you. I, I'm sorry. Yes, sir, please. Oh, I, I just wanted to say that I, I do agree in concept as far as mandatory sending it out. I'm just not sure I want to take away this proposal, as I understand it, takes away what the citizens now have between a half a percent of the valuation and one and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, now they could collect signatures and bring petition in on, on an expenditure over approximately 500000 where this would say they can't do that anymore and it would only be mandatory at one and a half percent valuation. So I'd like to talk that through. I think you all have very good points and that's why I was asking only that this be set up for a public hearing and no further action tonight. By setting it up for a public hearing, we'll provide the public with an opportunity to come and let us know what their thoughts are. There's nothing that mandates that we take action in September, but it gives us an opportunity to hear what the public has to say. I see reporters from two papers in the audience, uh, so I trust that the public will think about it. It will give us time to think about it. I don't want to rush it through. The last thing I would do would be to come tonight and say, let's have a charter change, let's put it on the ballot. But I think that asking um, to have a public hearing a month from now um, gives us a lot of time to think about this and get public input. Councillor Swift-Hatta. I'm, I'm sympathetic to our our chairman's interest in, in seeing the public involved in this, and I want to see the public involved in this. I think it would be precipitous process-wise, and I'm not usually too picky about process, but the public hearings usually come when there's something to react to, so the public can react to something, and we can all, everyone can be sort of better informed about a proposal or an idea and I think we're all sort of just at the very beginning stages in clarifying our own thinking. And um, I think it would raise expectations. If we had a public hearing next month, it would raise expectations that indeed uh, uh, it was going to be a referendum vote this fall. And I, I don't think it will be a referendum vote this fall because a, a charter change vote this fall because I don't think there's time enough. So, I don't want to raise everybody's expectations by having a public hearing before there's anything to really react to. And then sort of thud, it lies there for a while and the public is left wondering, so what's going on? Um, ditto on that and I would add that if we have a public hearing, people will be reacting to what we have here tonight, where in fact the language may change, the numbers may change, and we will get a public hearing with their input on something that we may not even agree on. And so yeah, I agree with uh, Anne that we uh, should hold off on this and, and flesh it out some more. Well, we often have public hearings on things that we don't all agree on, well, but um, I'll call the question and I'll I will make one, one comment. I haven't commented yet, really. Uh, I, I think it's a very good idea bring uniformity to what we decide to, uh, how we decide to spend money on things. I want to make sure that we don't diminish the council's authority in what they can and cannot approve. Um, but I don't think it hurts to have public comment either. The, the public is not likely to get a copy of this entire draft and read it through, but if they want to come down and say, you know, I think this is a good idea in general, a bad idea in general, give us a little direction because we're obviously not prepared to vote on it in September anyway. But it, I don't think it hurts to have some, some public comment. It's my thought. So, could I ask a question of Councillor Moore to the chair? Yes. Um, if we have a public hearing, then we're going to have to take a vote, or we, we table it. I mean, I don't see why we would do that up front rather than do it, you know, present them with what we, we think and then let them comment and take yeah. it from there. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chairman, my only thought was we get some public input, then we go to a workshop at some later date after having some public input, 
uh, and then bring it back to them again. That was all I was thinking. Councilman McGinty. Can I make a motion? You may make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that this item be uh, sent to a workshop for uh, further consideration. Second. All in, any further discussion? All in favor? And opposed? There wasn't an, a motion, I forgot. <laughs> and uh, if I could just add, add one mm -hmm. comment, if I'm not completely out of order. I think there is, from what I'm hearing, general interest in this. So Definitely. just to let our chair know, we were not trying to rain on her idea. No, I think I, general I support it. for it. Yeah. Um, I understand yeah. that. I, I, my vote against it going to workshop was as a matter of timing in a sense that we could accomplish it more quickly than I guess the rest of you. So, um, let's see. Item 410304 is consideration of granting a quick claim deed for map U29 lot 31 at 46 Spur Link Avenue. And I will ask the town manager to discuss this item. Yeah, uh, in this particular instance, all the taxes have now been paid. Uh, the property is now being be resided in by the daughter of uh, the estate of uh, Ruth Maple, and uh, the, the plan would be for us to return the property uh, back into the estate, uh, and then uh, it would be just a matter of uh, course privately for the estate then to uh, transfer it to uh, Judith Kranz, who is the current owner of the property, but all the taxes have been paid. And it would be in order to uh, accept the payment and to uh, authorize the claim to be signed. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Six zero. Okay, and item 420304, consideration of a recommendation from the planning board for the acceptance of a conservation easement at 246 Ocean House Road. And Mr. McGovern? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, you have a two or three page document that's been prepared by the town, town attorney's office uh, that uh, has been reviewed by the planning board and also is, has, I think has been, I don't know the, I don't know the extent to which the Conservation Commission was involved, but I'm sure they were involved some. As you see, uh, this does protect an important uh, wetlands resource, primarily wetlands, along Route uh, 77 as you're coming up into the, to the center of town. Uh, it is an area where there's going to be some future uh, other development of a couple of parcels for a couple of homes. So uh, the planning board was pleased to have this offer for conservation easement and uh, hopes that the town council uh, would accept it. Move that we accept this uh, conservation easement as proposed. Second. Second. Any discussion, Councilor Mullins? In looking at the paperwork that uh, Mike sent over, there's a line here that says the easement includes a pedestrian trail which will be activated only after a connection to this trail can be made to the trails in Robinson Woods. Uh, what is it going to take to get that connection made? What things have to happen? Uh, if you look at the map uh, on the, the final page, you have, first of all, you've got lot three that you'd need to get an easement over. And then it, it's a real odd layout. And then you have another lot. Uh, and then see that tiny little sliver to keep going to the right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've got a third lot. You know, beyond that, it, you know, it's, it's owned by Robinson Land, but before you get to that, you have land now owned by Pond, you have land owned by Eric Chinquet, and you have another lot that I think, I believe is also owned by uh, Eric Chinquet. So we would need to obtain those easements from uh, the prop, the owner of interest in the Chinquet, I'm not sure the, the legal name that he's got it in, as well as the Pond property as well, so. And, uh, and, and Timothy. And as well as eventually from uh, the, Tim Robinson land. 
Where, where, where? It's a ways away, but it, yeah. other than that, if, if you get those other three pieces, you've connected, in essence, Lions Field all the way to Fort William uh, with, uh, with a connection there, which was one of the original dreams of the Green Belt, of the Green Belt, of the <laughs> <laughs> Green Belt plan uh, back in the uh, late 70s when the Conservation Commission was first formed. Councillor Roberts. I might add that whenever a town acquires additional pieces like this, that is added into our total acreage, and the total acreage is used in a calculation for other acquisitions later. So even though the land itself may not have any great value for years to come, it is added into that calculation formula, and Maureen would be, need to be here to really explain how that works, but it's good for the town. How is this going to affect our tax base? It, it will positively affect our tax base because as part of the subdivision plan, um, it's, uh, there'll be two new homes built uh, by the developers of the what's known as the Peru parcel. At least two homes, two or three, and uh, you know, I assume those will be uh, uh, substantial homes and they'll also have vehicles of the excise and uh, it's, a, it's a definite win for the town as part of the overall development scheme. As, as part of the cluster ordinance, in order for them to cluster, they have to provide open space. So, you know. I would point out, too, this is merely an easement. It's not a fee simple. Um, so right. it's Conservation. what is being transferred is the right to cross over, but not the land on fee simple. I just want to make sure we weren't taking more land off the tax roll. Oh, no. it, you know, whenever you accept an easement, it does reduce the property value uh, because the property value is therefore encumbered and is not at the, the total free will and use of the, uh, the owner. But they couldn't put in the two houses without it. I don't know. Good question. Be tough. Okay. They, have, they have to give up something to do that. I'm not sure the form is going to allow. The, uh, for everything I understand, Maureen, uh, Kansas Carew, who is, uh, you know, the, one of the parties and her brother Jack uh, have, in, you know, their representatives have been excellent to work with and, uh, you know, we wish them well uh, as they uh, develop this property and uh, build some nice homes there. Any further discussion? All in favor? Six zero. And now it's that time on the agenda to hear from any citizens who would like to discuss any matters not on the agenda. And seeing no one. Uh, like manager, to... point of order. Um, regarding item number one on the agenda tonight. Did I skip something? No. no. Oh, yes. Um, the Councillor Roberts made a good point that by charter, and I checked the charter, um, we are required to set up pay by ordinance. And I'd like to know what the process is going to be for us to do that. Um, we're, point of information, we're required to set a certain amount. It says council pay shall be set by, it doesn't say amount, it says no, it's compensation, I um, have to find it here, but it, it basically says compensation for the council shall be set by um, uh, compensation of the council shall be set by ordinance. Well, I think that we can workshop this issue, <laughs> but it can always come back to us as a, di a different proposed ordinance. Well, I, mean, I just, I think we need to resolve that we need to conform with the charter with what it says. How we do it, I, I'm, well, you know, I'm I open to that. We workshop it because I don't think there's, but also if we workshop it, we will have a seventh counselor here. And um, I think we ought to wait till we have seven counselors. Is, is it in the ordinances now? In, it must be there in order for us to get $350. 
It's not. It's yeah, yes, maybe the town manager can answer that. When the, when the council raised this item in the budget process and decided to do away with your salaries, I did some due diligence and discovered uh, that there's an omission in the charter that you. Uh, the there's, there's an omission that it is not in fact in there when when in fact it should be, and that's how this happened to came come forward was, uh, you know, it was originally in another form, but the council changed it last month. Uh, was to uh, come into conformance with the charter by uh, putting something in there. Put in a dollar. <laughs> Councilor Moll. Madam Chairman, if I may ask, to bring this issue back again in September, uh, can we simply reread the item as it is, or do we have to make a modification? To I it? think that someone on the prevailing side has to move to reconsider it. One of the three no votes. To bring this this item back, this particular item, but I would suggest we workshop it along with alewives <laughs> and charter changes. <laughs> that was good, Councilor. No, I hate to bring up a <laughs> sticky issue, but under the council rules for for reconsideration, this would need to come up at the next regular meeting for reconsideration or it would not be in order for the balance of the council year. Councilor swift Hayata. Well, I was on the prevailing side, even though it was a tie vote, prevailing because the motion failed. Um, I am also a person who feels that we should be paid zero for both budgetary reasons and also equity with the school board. However, since the charter requires that we need to um, <coughs> set some amount, can I, I'm not sure procedurally how I have to do this. I, I would request that this come up at the next meeting. Can you, but I'm I, sorry, can you repeat what you just I would request, since I'm on the prevailing side, and even though I'm a person who doesn't want, want us to be paid anything, both for budget reasons and for um, the reasons of, of equity, um, I, I think volunteer boards are what we have throughout the town, including the school board, and everyone recognizes that they and the rest of the volunteers do great service for free. However, since the charter requires that we set an amount, I think we need to set an amount. So I would like to propose bringing it up again next month. I'm not making that motion yet, but I'm asking, do I have to, would I have to make a motion for a specific proposal? Because I'm not in favor of the I think proposal. we should move to, to reconsider. Move to reconsider this at the next meeting. Okay, then I would move to reconsider because I think we need to deal with it and just get it done and over with. It's not an agenda item. I, don't, I think you just, the answer is bring it up later. Well, it is an agenda and, item. No, we've, we've passed that item. Would you like me to try to help? <laughs> yes. It can either be reconsidered this evening. Yeah. Or you can ask between now and next month anyone in the prevailing side to have an item on the agenda, uh, printed agenda, asking for reconsideration. You wouldn't actually make that motion this evening. Reconsideration of, of item number. Or of this item number. Of just number. the item number. And, and you could either ask in advance of September 1 for that to be on the September agenda, or you could just bring it up at the meeting uh, as, as a motion to reconsider. Because those are your options, either tonight <laughs> or to notify, what if I don't like, like have it on the agenda, <laughs> or to uh, just bring it up at the next meeting. Could, 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 I, could, so, could, so we, could we ask for reconsideration tonight and then vote to table it to next month's meeting? We can do that as informed. I mean, I would, I would support that, that somebody wants to do that. <laughs> don't <laughs> look at her, she's the chair. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to get in front of you. Uh, I think it would be nice to pick it up again next month, especially since David Backer was away, and that way we can get his feelings on the issue. I'll never miss another meeting. <laughs> really, only three, three votes. Um, then I would like to 
move that it be <laughs> it's so weird because I'm, ag I'm against it but I, I would like to move that it be reconsidered tabled no, we move first we move to reconsider move the to action. reconsider the action okay thank you second? I'm sorry I'm so jet lagged I'm like incoherent is there a second on that can anyone second it anyone oh, yeah. okay. okay we have a second all in favor of reconsidering Five, all opposed, one. <laughs> Matter of principle. <laughs> okay. Uh, now. Madam Chair. Do we have, uh, you sorry, Council Mould. Oh, I was just going to ask Madam Chairman if we could table this item until September. You want to make a mo motion? Madam Chairman, may I motion, make a motion that we table a uh, discussion of the. Item 32. Item 32-03-04 until the September Council meeting. Okay. Second? Second. And there's no discussion on the tabling, so all in favor? Six zero. Okay. <laughs> now just um, the next uh, scheduled meeting of uh, the Town Council, our regular meeting is September 8th at 7.30 in the chambers and the next scheduled meeting of the town council in a workshop is Thursday, August 21st at 7.30 p.m. here at town hall and the primary agenda item of that meeting is the report of the refuse materials handling committee. So with that, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved. Second. All in favor? Five, six, zero. Okay. <laughs>